Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror drama film, Mr. Harrigan's Phone. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. During 2003 in the village of a town in Maine, a boy named Craig narrates how everything started after his mother died. They attend church and sing praises. Suddenly, an old man enters the church. Craig comes up to the podium and reads a Bible verse. After that, he returns to his seat and glances at the old man who nods at him. After the mass, the old man follows them to their home. He is Harrigan, a billionaire and the richest guy in Maine. He tells Craig's dad that he likes the way Craig reads in the church and wants to give him a job as someone who reads books for him because his eyes are getting weak. The next scene shows Craig walking toward Harrigan's mansion. The gardener gazes at him terrifyingly. Craig is about to knock, but the maid opens the door. She interrupts Craig from introducing himself and says that she knows him. She tells where Harrigan is. Craig looks around the house because he hasn't seen anything this big. He sees Mr. Harrigan waiting for him to arrive. He starts reading a book for him. Craig also does chores in the mansion. He waters the flowers and shovels the snow. Later, Craig reads another book to Harrigan, which is about money that it can do anything. Later that night, while Craig is doing his homework and his father is computing their bills, he remembers how his father used to be happy compared to now, always looking sad. Craig thinks that it's his fault that his mom died, as he wasn't able to do anything to stop it. The next day, Craig arrives in Harrigan's room, but he isn't there. Craig moves the chair to sit, then sees a closet. He's about to open it, but Harrigan asks him what he's doing. Craig apologizes for intruding and asks what's in the closet. Harrigan replies that terrible secrets are inside. Craig starts reading for Harrigan. He asks Craig if he understands what he just read. Craig thinks he does. Harrigan nods and gives his salary. Craig asks if Harrigan reads when he is not there. Harrigan answers that he reads newspapers because he likes finances, but Craig finds it boring. Harrigan reminds him about the second book they read, about a father teaching his son to understand the true value of money that is not measured in worth, but in power. After that day, Craig is in the library researching Harrigan. He finds out that Harrigan is a cruel man and he doesn't have a family or relatives. Craig receives a letter from Harrigan with a lotto ticket. Craig's father says that Craig's mother won't like finding out that Craig is scratching lottery tickets as she thought of it as gambling, but the father lets him scratch it. He goes to his room and gets his lucky dime in his small box, but doesn't win anything. The father says that Harrigan is cheap as he gave Craig a lottery ticket for a bonus. The next scene shows Craig reading a book for Harrigan. Five years later, Craig is now older, reading the same book. Harrigan tells Craig to stop reading. Craig says that he didn't understand the book title the first time he read it, but he does now. Harrigan asks what it means to him now. Craig replies that horses can be put out of misery, but humans can't do the same thing. Craig is on a school bus on the way to school with other students from their town. U-Boat, a student older than them, asks Craig and his friends for payment to show them around the school. U-Boat tells them not to look to their left, where the delinquent students are. But Craig still looks at them, and a bully boy named Bully sees him looking their way. U-Boat continues to show them around. On their last stop is the cafeteria. They all have different tables, based on what smartphone brands they have. It surprises them, because the iPhone just came out, and they don't have any phones. The friend says that they have to get phones. Craig bumps into Bully. He waits until no one can see them and gives Craig a paper bag containing a shoe polish. Bully tells him that every freshman should shine Bully's shoes. Craig doesn't want to because he's on his way at his next class, but Bully prevents him from going anywhere. The teacher sees them arguing and asks what they're doing and what's inside the bag. Bully doesn't answer, so she asks Craig instead. He says that it's a sandwich and Bully was just asking him if he wanted it, making the teacher leave them be. Even after Craig lied to protect him, Bully gets mad because Craig didn't shine his shoes. Craig gets home. His father asks him if he needs anything. Craig is about to go up to his room, but goes back and asks his father for a phone. His father asks him what he needs it for, and Craig says that it's for when there's an emergency. It'd be easy to call help. But the father tells him that their town is so small that if he shouts, their neighbors will show up. The next day, Craig is at Harrigan's, reading a book. Harrigan tells him to stop, as he forgot how much he hates the story, since the main character breaks the rules to get ahead of others. While Craig is watering the plants, he asks Harrigan if someone has already bullied him in his work. Harrigan tells him that it happens every day, and he deals with them harshly. It's Christmas morning, and Craig opens gifts with his father. He opens the small gift first from Harrigan. It's a letter and a lottery card again. He scratches it to see that he won $3,000. He then opens his father's gift to see an iPhone. Craig smiles and hugs his dad. Craig calls Harrigan using his new phone and tells him about the lottery ticket. Harrigan is glad that he finally won after so many tickets. 
After the holiday, Craig goes to school and hurries to go to the cafeteria so he can sit at the iPhone table. Shortly after, his friends also buck phones. Next scene shows Craig getting his pay from Harrigan, and he asks Craig why he continues to read for him, since Craig can spend his time on other things. Craig answers that he comes there because he enjoys doing it and that he feels important as he doesn't feel that way outside that room. Later that night, as Craig is having dinner with his father, he tells him that he knows what to spend for the lottery money. His father says that they already agreed that it would go to his college fund. Craig answers back that his father said most of it would go for his college and he could spend some of it. Craig buys something for Harrigan, but he answers that he doesn't need anything. Harrigan opens it to see an iPhone. He thanks Craig, but refuses to accept it and tells him to just give it to his father. Harrigan tells him that he would spend all of his time using devices if he had a television or even a radio in his house. Craig still teaches him how to use it and shows that there is a stock market and the numbers are in real time. This fascinates Harrigan as it can do many things. Craig teaches him where he can read financial news. Harrigan chooses to keep the phone. Every time Craig visits Harrigan, Craig further teaches him how to use the phone. Harrigan tells Craig that he doesn't like his ringtone, so Craig changes it. He also sets a different ringtone for the both of them, so that they know when they are calling. Craig asks Harrigan what he wants him to read, but there is something else in Harrigan's mind. He tells Craig that phones could be a gateway drug that people would be addicted to, and false information would be common, but he continues to use his phone. Craig reads to Harrigan, but yet again, he's busy with his phone. Craig slams the book close to get Harrigan's attention. Harrigan apologizes and asks Craig to get his checkbook in his drawer. While Harrigan is writing in the checkbook, Craig asks why he decided to move to their small town. Harrigan says that he doesn't like people. Craig sees an oxygen tank, indicating Harrigan's illness. Harrigan says that he uses it at night and that Craig doesn't need to worry about it. Harrigan then advises Craig that his dream job will be difficult and unfair, and he will make enemies, because Harrigan did. Harrigan asks Craig to promise that he will deal with his enemies, and Craig agrees. Next day, Craig knocks on Harrigan's door, but nobody answers it. Moments later, he goes inside and sees Harrigan in his chair with an oxygen tank while holding his phone, unconscious. He shakes Harrigan. Suddenly, Craig's phone rings. He realizes that Harrigan was supposed to call him. He continues to shake Harrigan, but he no longer has a pulse. Craig places a mirror below his nose to see if it would fog, but Harrigan is no longer breathing. Craig calls his father to tell him that Harrigan is dead, so his father calls an ambulance. His father tells him to go outside and wait for it, but he decides to read Harrigan a book one last time. Craig takes Harrigan's phone with him. He texts Harrigan's number, saying that he will miss their afternoon bondings. At Harrigan's funeral, people fall in line to see him one last time. His father asks him if he wants to see him one last time. Craig responds that he wants to be the last. While all the people are outside, Craig puts Mr. Harrigan's phone in his pocket. Harrigan is buried near his mother's grave. After the funeral, Harrigan's secretary talks to Craig and his dad and gives them a letter. Craig opens the letter and reads that Harrigan left him $8,000 to fund his college and to start his career. In the last part of the letter, Harrigan wrote that he will also miss their afternoon bondings. This surprises Craig as he texted Harrigan's phone after he had died. This indicates that Harrigan's message seems to answer Craig's text. That night, Craig leads a voicemail to Harrigan, thanking him for what he left to Craig. When Craig wakes up, he sees a text from Harrigan, written with random letters. He rushes to his dad, saying that Harrigan is alive because he put the phone in Harrigan's pocket. His father tells him that maybe the phone was hacked. There had been an autopsy of Harrigan's body, proving that he died because of heart disease. Craig goes to Harrigan's grave and calls Harrigan's phone. He hears it ring below the ground. He then heads to Harrigan's place, and the maid opens the door for him. They talk about Harrigan, and the maid tells him about a former gardener eight months before the current one replaced him, since he was caught stealing, but he didn't apologize for what he did. Craig asks what happened to the former gardener after that, but the maid doesn't answer. A few days later, Harrigan's house went for sale. Craig's school days became normal, nothing unusual was happening. Until one day, on his way to the bus, he sees Bully dealing drugs with another student. After that, Bully got caught. He thinks that Craig is the one who reported him, when actually he didn't. The school holds an event. Craig invites a girl to go to the dance with him, and the girl accepts his offer. On the night of the dance, Craig goes outside, while Bully is waiting for him. Bully confronts Craig about reporting, even if he wasn't the one who reported it, which leads to them having a fistfight. Bully beats Craig up badly. The teacher treats Craig in her house, but he doesn't tell her that it's Bully's doing. His father picks him up. Craig doesn't want to tell his father about the fight and decides to voicemail Harrigan about what happened. The next day, he sees a text from U-Boat saying that Bully is dead. 
He goes to Bully's place with his friends. He feels bad for Bully's family. After school, Craig goes to a trailer park where the former gardener lives to find out about his past with Harrigan, but finds out that he died a long time ago. On the former gardener's garage gate, a curse word is written in paint with Harrigan's initials. Later, Craig calls Harrigan's phone to voicemail, saying what happened to Bully. Craig probably believes that Harrigan did this and he didn't want Bully to die. He says that if Harrigan is there, knock on his wall three times. To his surprise, his phone rings with a text notification. Craig picks it up and drops it when he sees a text with random letters again from Harrigan. Craig talks to the reverend of the town about what's happening. The reverend says Craig's father is right that the phone is hacked. The reverend adds that he has talked to a priest from the school, saying that Bully died because he tried to sneak out late at night out of their window and fell down. A scene flashes, showing a lifeless Bully with shoe polish to his mouth, while lying down the same way where he beat Craig up. Craig decides that he wants to get rid of his phone and buys a new one out of fright. The agent sells him the new iPhone, and all his files from his old phone are backed up to the new one. The agent says that the random texts were glitches because the production was rushed. The agent tells him that they will not get rid of his old phone, but will donate it to others who need it. Craig changes his mind and says that he will keep it. Craig goes to an alley after buying the new phone, then checks the contacts. He sees Harrigan's contact is still there. He arrives home and throws his old phone in the trash, but he changes his mind again and keeps it in his small box, hiding it inside his closet. A letter arrives, addressed to Craig from his college application. He got accepted. Craig and his dad prepare Craig's belongings needed for college. They say their goodbyes to each other. Craig gets inside his car and sees an illusion of his mother waving goodbye beside his dad. Craig arrives in his dormitory, where his roommate helps him to get his things, also showing him around the room. After that, Craig studies hard so that his dad and Harrigan will be proud of him. One night, Craig's dad calls him and says that there's bad news. The teacher died in a car accident with her fiancé, saying that they were on their way back from a vacation until a drunk driver hit their car, causing them to die on the spot. At the teacher's wake, Craig finds out from his friends that the driver survived the crash without any injuries, has no license, and already has four drunk driving arrests. But even after all of this, the driver didn't go to prison and only was given six months of rehab where people get treated special. Craig heads home and gets his old phone in his cabinet. He also sees a flower crown, it was from when his mom was still alive. He then charges his old phone, and a few moments later, he locks his door and calls Mr. Harrigan directed to voicemail, telling him what happened to his high school teacher, saying that he wants the driver dead since he deserves it. After that, he regrets making the call because he knows what's about to happen. He heads to school and searches online to see if the driver is dead. When he arrives at his dorm, he checks his laptop and reads an article that the driver is dead. Craig drives to a man's home who works in the rehab where the driver died. Craig pretends that he works for a newspaper so that he could get information. They later meet elsewhere inside the man's car. He pays the man, and the man says that the driver killed himself by choking on a bar of soap while having a naked shower. Craig finds out that the driver wrote a note. It was a line from the song of Harrigan's favorite song, the same song as their ringtone. Craig goes inside his car and is furious because he knows that he's the reason why this happened. After that, Craig goes to Harrigan's home and looks inside the secret closet. What's inside are Harrigan's memories. He finds out that Harrigan's mom died when he was young just like Craig. That's why Harrigan chose him to read for him because he knows what it feels like to be lonely. Then again, he receives a random text from Harrigan. He goes to Harrigan's grave because he figured out what Harrigan's text means. It means that he wants Craig to stop asking him to do things for him. Craig apologizes and thanks Mr. Harrigan for looking out for him even after his death. Craig then visits his mother's grave and cries because of all the terrible things he has done. This means that the deaths were made by Craig's decisions. Craig runs towards a lake and stands at the edge of a cliff. He gets his old phone from his pocket and throws it in the water. He gets his other phone. Just as he's about to throw it too, he decides to keep it, then he leaves. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.